Okay, so let's talk about challenge groups because this is where you are going to be providing your customers, your coaches with the best experience that they cannot get anywhere else because they don't have you anywhere else. So your challenge groups can take place in one of two places. They can be on Facebook or they can be on the Challenge Tracker app. It is up to you to decide which platform you want to use. They both have their, their really good things about them and they both have the things that maybe you don't like about them. The Challenge Tracker app is a great way to really be able to see who's checking in every day. It doesn't require as much like skimming through as Facebook does, which is what I love about the app. The scheduling feature in the app is awesome as well. With Facebook, I love the live video feature. I love that people already know how to use Facebook. And I love that I'm already on Facebook, so it's easier for me to check in. So whichever option you decide to go with, there's good things and bad things about both, but you just have to pick the one that you're the most comfortable with and the one that um, is gonna be the most fun for you. Because if it's not fun, you're not gonna wanna do it. So challenge groups are important because this is where you're going to create your coaches. You're going to be teaching them basically how to be a coach while they're getting results. So some things you might wanna do is ask them to post sweaty selfies or ask them to share recipes or ask them to like really motivate each other and like each other's posts and be that person just like you, keeping everyone on track. Cause it's not just you in that group. You have a whole bunch of people in that group and you all have goals that you're working on. So make sure your challengers know that they are equally as important and influential in the success of the group as you are. Challenge groups are a place where your clients and your coaches are going to get results and these results are going to build businesses. So really make sure that your coaches are taking it seriously and your challengers are taking this seriously. Don't let them just buy something from you and then not do it. This is your place to hold them accountable and you told them you were gonna hold them accountable, so you better be. You have to check in with them weekly and make sure that they're on track. Make sure that they know how to make their shake because if they don't make it right, they're not gonna like it. Make sure they know how to use the on-demand because if they don't know how to use it, they're not gonna be able to do the workouts. Make sure that they're fully committed. You can even make them sign a contract, which is something that I do and I love it because it really makes people treat it seriously. I also make my challengers send me their before photos and measurements in a Dropbox folder so that I know that they're taking it seriously and also at the end they're able to take that before photo and put it next to that after photo and just be like, oh my god, that's amazing, I can't believe I did that and that is, oh that just feels so good when you're able to do that for somebody. You really want your challenge groups to be fun and engaging, you want to do like mini challenges maybe like Wacky Wednesday or push-up challenge or squat challenge or just different things to get people motivated. Maybe you want to do Thirsty Thursdays and water challenges and random things. Like whatever you can do to make it fun and exciting for your challengers, do it. You can even do weekly drawings. You could do weekly check-ins. You can do um, like prizes and things like that every week or at the end you can do a big prize. Whatever you want to do, it's your group. You just have to show up every day and be that role model for them. Because if you're not checking in every day and you're not sharing your workout and you're not sharing your shake, how can you ex expect them to? You need to participate in your challenge group just as much as you want your challengers to participate in it too. So a couple last tips when you're making a challenge group, you want to have some type of theme for it. You want to come up with a cool creative name. You don't want to just call it like shift shop challenge group or 21 day fix challenge group. You want to come up with something that's maybe seasonal or fun or relevant to your target market. So for example, our shift shop challenge group right now is called shift happens and it's a funny play on words and it's just something that's different. So everyone's going to be talking about shift shop, shift shop, I can't say that fast, shift shop, shift shop, shift shop, shift shop, try saying that 15 times fast. Um, everyone's going to be talking about that. So if you're talking about a group called Shift Happens, that's different. That's interesting. You don't just want to call it like Bikini Boot Camp. Like everyone says that. Come up with something different. I know Emmy has a group that she did and she called it Confidence Over Calories. And that's really cool because that's really part of her target market. She used to count calories and now they're working on building confidence. I love that. Be creative. If you need help being creative, you can always come in the team page and ask people for for some tips because we've got a lot of creative people on our team, but just have fun with it. Just make it exciting and different. 
So you also want to pick a date and you want to set a date for when your challenge group is going to begin. Even if you have nobody for it yet, you want to pick a date because having a date gives you a date to invite to and it creates a sense of urgency for those people who are going to get started with you. So I typically start mine the third, uh, third Monday of every month and that's something that every month you can do the third Monday so you know when the next group is coming up. If they can't make it into this group, they can always make it into the following group. Or if you wanted to do an ongoing type of challenge group, which is something that I'm actually doing at the moment of this video, um, I do a prep week every other week. So I have a group on Facebook and I do live videos every day and I talk about meal planning and meal prep and taking your before photos and measurements and goals. Each day I share one thing and then the following week they get put into my self love studio which is my large ongoing challenge group where I'm just continually checking into that every day. Each week a new class of people are being added so they get to see the people who've been doing it for a while and they get to kind of lead and show them the way and then those people usually end up being coaches because they're already coaching these new people. So it really gives people a sense of belonging, a sense of a community because there's people that have been in there and then there's new people coming in and they're kind of taking them under their wing and helping them. So I do really like how that works and that is why I like the Facebook for that aspect of a challenge group. But the Challenge Tracker app is amazing too. So when you have a date for your challenge group, you want to be posting about it, you want to be inviting to it, you want to be posting about it pretty frequently, and then you want to do a last call post like three days before it starts, so you can get any of those stragglers who are just waiting to the very last second to join you. Last and most important thing, you always need to have a challenge group. Every single month you need to have one or if you're doing an ongoing one, but you always have to be inviting to something. So even if you don't have a group coming up for a couple of weeks, that doesn't mean you can't invite. You always, 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 always want to be inviting to something.